What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are at Robbie's Garage. What is going on, Robbie? We missed you. Not much. <laughs> He's like, not much. I have some daily work to do. I've had my rack leaking for quite a few months now. It wasn't. It hasn't been a major leak. It's been something minimal. But uh, Robbie's gonna help me out with that. So we have a new rack to put in. We have some new bushings to put in. We're just kind of winterizing this, getting this thing ready for the winter because I have been driving this car for now uh, six years of every single day. So I've been putting mileage on her. Um, but yeah, as you can tell, we swapped the works off. We got the uh, just the OEM wheels on there. They look so ugly. I gotta shake off the rust of filming, bro. I don't. <laughs> I'm super, super, super thankful to have Robbie here to let me be able to use his space because I would be doing this in my dad's driveway because the drift car is out of commission and uh, I'd be freezing. So this is gonna be a whole Once dream. Warms up, we'll awesome. Oh yeah, we're Gucci. Alrighty, guys. So we got the car raised up. We took the wheels off. Now. Robbie has this engine support bar here. Basically what we did is um, he's got these two brackets that he made from the original engine brackets that you can see right in there. Um, he took two of them and welded an eye hook on each side. So basically what, all we have to do is we run a piece of chain through the eye hook up to the engine support bar here on each side. As you can see the chain, everything's up. We have this just to protect the plenum. And then basically what we're gonna do is when we drop the subframe, this is actually gonna hold tension on the motor in place so then we don't have to worry about anything. So uh, right now, before I actually start adding tension to this, what I'm gonna do is go under the car and we're gonna uh, undo the motor mounts. We're gonna loosen up the motor mounts. So basically, uh, as I'm loosening those up, I'm gonna practically put tension on the motor and we're just gonna raise it like the slightest bit so we just know that the pressure of the motor, the weight of the motor is being held by the support bar. And then from there, we'll uh, work on the four bolts for dropping the subframe so then we can just kinda slip the uh, power steering rack right out. And when we pull the power steering rack out, we're gonna be pulling it from the actual driver's side uh, due to the fact that the solenoid right here on the power steering rack, you won't be able to pull it through the dry, or the passenger side because it's gonna have to fit through or whatnot. So all we're gonna do is just pull it out this way. So right now, I got all this done. I'm gonna go under the car, undo the two motor mount uh, bolts. Since we have tension on the motor, um, what we're doing now, we're working on the steering knuckle. So all we're doing is taking that 12 millimeter bolt off. We're gonna have to separate the joint a little bit. Yeah. Leave some tension. So now the main thing, like when we're trying to separate these uh, from this alignment tool here, you just wanna make sure that you're not gonna crack this alignment tool because it's pretty, it's a necessity to have to know that your steering wheel's straight. It's not an absolute necessity. It will be a lot more tricky to align yeah. and center the rack without it. And that plastic piece is pretty brittle, so yeah, you want to be gentle with it. Yeah, she's moving. I'm gonna try to just hold this there. You're, tur you're turning. There. Yeah. See. So since we have the steering column disconnected from the power steering rack, now what we, we just did, we just undid the two uh, connectors here. Okay, one's for the solenoid, one's for, I forgot exactly what this pressure one's for, sensor. the pressure sensor. So there's that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack these two lines open, let them drain. As those are draining, we're gonna work on our outers. We're gonna take the outers out of the knuckle on each side. Since we got the outers out, we undid the bolts from the power steering rack since it was already bolted up with the uh, subframe. We unbolted the power steering rack uh, brackets and then we just did the four bolts for the subframe. So now we just have the jack somewhat supporting the uh, subframe. And now what we're gonna start doing on right is we're gonna start pulling this out towards me. Yep. yep. Um, we may have to come down a little farther. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, we just gotta bring the jack or down. We might be able to rotate the rack. Yeah, yeah. To get it through. Okay, so that's what we're doing now. We're gonna start pulling the rack out towards me now. Robbie and myself got this rack back in with our new bushings. Uh, we bolted everything up back just for the rack. So the four bolts, the two in the front, two in the back for the rack are in. So now we're gonna practically center the rack. Uh, at buy auto parts or whatever that I got the rack from, 
they didn't have a centering tool or anything like that. So there are a couple markings that we noticed that are on the OEM rack compared to, yeah, yeah. So, where is it? Oh, this way. So as you can see, there's this, uh, there we go. So there's a little pinhole there. So basically uh, the, P, the plastic piece that goes straight up towards the steering rack, that's where we align that. And then there's a little dimple, um, right? It's gonna be kind of hard to see with the, so can you put your finger on it, that little dimple? Right there, there's a little dimple. So the piece that actually lays flat on the spindle part here that lays on the lower part here that lines up with there so we just tried to line up the two on this rack um because this rack actually had an extra line but i we we're thinking that the extra line just comes in line with um that it, little pinhole it so it, it, it doesn't but close. it was close yeah, yeah yeah but we we've never i've never seen that before he's never seen that before so but yeah now we got that so now we're just gonna practically subframe up and then center everything. Yeah. We lowered the motor down. We sucked up all the bolts. We got everything bolted back up. Uh, we're gonna start bleeding the system now. Bleeding the system is very, very simple. All you have to do is just make sure that your fluid one stays above, like so it's got fluid in the actual reservoir. And then what we're gonna do is, uh, Robbie started in the beginning and all we did is without the car being on, we kind of just started rotating the wheel back and forth. You wanna go lock to lock very slowly have some of the fluid start pushing through and then once we noticed that the level wasn't going down anymore um we started the car so then you start the car and uh he just did it really quick he had me start the car for probably like three seconds four seconds and then shut it off and then the fluid got sucked down so then we filled it back up we did a couple more tur turns with the car off and then he said turn the car on and then we started the car and we just bled it from lock to lock and starting slowly you'll kind of hear the uh the pump kind of whine at you so just do it slowly and then from there once like the fluid is kind of staying steady or whatnot you can start to speed it up a little bit go lock to lock each side until um obviously you know that the fluid is staying at the same level and you don't hear the pump whine and that's that so he said we will do like one more bleeding session where we actually have uh, gravity in place with the wheels actually on. The car's going to be down on the ground, and then we'll probably do one more bleed through, and then that's that. So, yeah. Thanks, Robbie. <laughs> All his insight in this wonderful thing. Uh, again, me and Andrew did pull the rack on the drift car, um, but this is – a little bit more and i i'd rather have someone like a professional like robbie actually helping me with something like this the drift car i could care less like rack goes in the drift car it is what it is but like this is my livelihood this gets me to work every day so it's very important that everything's done correctly on this so but yeah that's that uh we're about to get some pizza i'm about to show him some guns and then yeah Okay guys, so finally back home after replacing the power steering rack. I did say prior to this video that I was gonna actually rebuild the power steering rack and that the uh, I would basically just rebuild it and throw it back in the car. With timing and everything, I wasn't really able to do that and I wanted to have something that was gonna be more sound. Um, so I actually went, again, I'm gonna put a link in the description, but it was by Auto Parts. Um, it was a rebuilt rack already. Um, from like a professional that's done it or whatnot. Overall, I just wanted something that I know that I could just kind of throw in the daily, get it together, and then just get out of uh, Robbie's hair, one, and two, be able to get to work the next day without having any issues. So uh, I do still plan on having with my core. Uh, I kept a core, so what I'm gonna do is rebuild the core, and I'll have a total video on that, on exactly how to do that and whatnot, and I'm gonna throw that power steering rack into the drift car. So overall, it'll still be beneficial to um, having that work done but again i just want to thank robbie for all all the help that he's helped me from six years ago to now it's been he's been an extreme help along with mark and everybody else that's helped me with the build um but yeah so for right now the daily's looking good put about uh 80 another 80 miles on it to get back home um i checked under the car moved it a bit haven't heard any whining in the power steering pump and i uh, haven't seen any leaks so it's good uh 
the, one of the main reasons again was because I had a leak um, and I did start to kind of feel like a, a jitter whenever I would kind of turn towards like full lock. I would feel like an empty space in the rack. So again, that's probably because of air being in the system and whatnot. With everything being done to this daily now, it, it, the car is pretty much brand new. But now since this project is out of the way, pretty much I just got to focus on the drift car now uh, and just really start trying to pull the motor and get all that work done before the season. So with that being said, again, I appreciate you guys so much for sticking by uh, with the channel and always keeping up to date with all the videos and such. I really appreciate it. But if you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button right here. And if you guys are looking for any additional content, all you have to do is hit one of the links right here. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.